Aliens in the Mind. Co-starring Vincent Price as Curtis Lark and Peter Cushing as John Cornelius. On the remote Scottish Isle of Lewig, Lark and Cornelius are convinced that the death of their friend, Dr. Hugh Dexter, was no accident. From his research notes, they diagnose the island sickness as early symptoms of a strange genetic mutation, affecting many of the island's inhabitants, turning them into zombies, blindly obeying orders from an unknown source. The key to the mystery seems to be an apparently simple-minded 18-year-old girl, Flora Keary, who saves them from burning to death in a fire that destroys Dr. Dexter's house, and with it, the housekeeper, Molly Kyle. Let it burn! No! No! We must go! I'm coming out! Do not move! Do not we must go! The Lord has an expanding and innocent expanding! Why didn't they go? Because I was telling them to stay. Why, Flora, why? Because now Louis is mine. <laughs> Louis is mine. <laughs> Morning, John. Oh. You still in bed? Where else should one be at this unearthly hour? <laughs> oh, look, and I distinctly say it four minutes. Look at it. Damn thing's raw. Well, you know, in some parts of the world, raw egg is considered quite a delicacy. Well, not here it isn't. <laughs> Did you discover anything of value in Hugh's notes? Oh, just bits and pieces. It's, it's like a jigsaw puzzle with most of the pieces missing. Well, that's more than we expected. We'll have to put together our own picture and then see how Hugh's pieces fit in. Well, now, let's see. What have we got so far? Hmm? Ah, I've got a slight feeling of nausea from this revolting egg. <laughs> Perfidious albumen. Oh, no, please, not at this time of day. Look, pour me some coffee, will you? <laughs> sure. It's my pleasure. No, ah, oh, thanks. Now, what have you got so far? The fact that they occurred on this island... A mutation of the human species brought about by some genetic transformation of the brain which enables it to receive some form of telepathic communication. Only to receive? Now, what about transmitting telepathic messages? Well, but that's huh? not proven, is it? No. We can be certain of only two cases. Molly Kyle, who is now dead, presumably, and Flora Keary, who, at best, is an imperfect example of a different, more highly developed mutation what Hugh was pleased to call the master race. Controllers would be a more accurate description of those two bizarre ladies. They both mm. seem to have this power of implanting their own thoughts, their own will, in the minds of other mutants. Mm. And so what outwardly look like ordinary human beings become, in fact, extensions of the mind of the controller, without even being aware of it. That's terrifying. Think what Hitler or Stalin might have done with power like that think what they did without it. According to Hugh's notes, in the 20 years he was on the island, there were 120 cases of mental disorientation. Mutant metamorphosis. What you will, which gives us 120 mutants under the age of, say, 33. 
And at least as many over that age. Mm Mm-hmm. 250, all told. And all totally indistinguishable from the rest of the inhabitants. Except for Flora. Yes. Except for Flora. We've got to get that girl to London. It's the only way. Oh, now, wait a minute. Hang on. That could be a pretty tall order. We must do it somehow. We need to run tests on her, medical checks. And do all the other things that Hugh Dexter tried to do. Precisely. And got himself murdered for. You know, that blaze last night at Hugh's place was no accident, John. It was meant for us. Someone out here just doesn't like us knowing too much. That's why we have to get Flora away from here. Surely you see that. Well, I can see the sense in it, but what I can't see is how to go about it. We'll start with the minister. I'd like our chances a lot better if I disliked him a little less. That man really... Now, John, about the minister, there's no doubt that he's a mutant. Well, he is a mutant, isn't he? Almost certainly, on the evidence we have. But he's not a controller. I would say it's unlikely. You know, once Flora realized Mrs. Kyle was dead, she said Luig was hers. I don't believe she would have dared say that if the minister was also a controller. No, and when I first met her yesterday, she seemed completely overawed by him. Yeah. Mind you, he is a trifle overbearing. <laughs> Not to mention unpleasant. <laughs> He's much too sinister for my taste. A sinister minister. Oh, <laughs> Kurt, <it's really. laughs> Still, this little visit of ours should dent his sanctimonious composure. How so? I feel sure he hoped, perhaps he even prayed, that we died last night. Well, we'll soon find out. The next few minutes could be quite interesting. Oh, Mr. Cornelius. Whatever's the matter, Mary? Uh, Come, uh, come in. Thank you. You look as though you'd seen a ghost. Eh, well, we we thought you must be dead. What made you think that? You're on fire up at the doctor's house last night. We'd gone by then. Yes, fortunate, wasn't it? Eh, but uh, Mr Cornelius said he'd be staying here for the night, and and when he didn't come back... The fault is entirely mine, Mary. I, I persuaded him to keep me company at the inn. Eh, well... All's well, I suppose. I'll, uh, I'll get the minister. Minister? Yes, Mary? Could I trouble you? They're coming. Well, what is it, Mary? There's uh, two visitors to see you. Mr. Cornelius and... Uh, Professor Lark. Uh, Professor Lark. Returned from the dead, minister. What? Well, you did manage to... Escape. We left before the fire broke out. Hi, you were... Fortunate. We'd feared the worst for that you. That will be all, Mary. Uh, yes, yes, Minister. What about Mrs. Kyle? There's the real tragedy for you. Such a fine woman, a real pillar of strength in the community. She is dead, then. Aye, they brought down the body this morning, or what was left of it. Aye, ah, strange that they should have found her in the doctor's study. Why not? She should have... She was usually out and about in the garden at that time of the day. Well, maybe she was uh, looking for something. Do they know what caused the fire? No, and I doubt they ever will, frankly. When will you be returning to London? We'll we'll get the boat back this afternoon, most probably. Aye, aye, very wise. And we'd like to take Flora with us. Flora? And what would you want to do a thing like that for? She is ill, Minister. Aye, she has the island sickness. We don't need a brain surgeon to tell us that. Minister, I suspect that she has a tumour. A tumour? On the brain. She has all the classic symptoms. And it's the most likely explanation why she has not returned to normal like everyone else has done. Oh, I see, I see. And I suppose you will be wanting to operate on her yourself, Mr. High and Mighty Cornelius. Only if my first diagnosis proves correct. Well, I'm not committing that poor wee lassie to having her brain meddled with. I have no right, anyway. You don't need one. She has a perfect right of her own. She's of age. But she's not compass mentis, is she? 
Not all the time, certainly. But some of the time her mentis is so compass it's almost out of sight. Now what's that supposed to oh, mean? It's just a manner of speaking. Minister? Well, Mary, what is the matter? Have you have you seen Flora this morning, Minister? No, why? Her uh, her bed's not been slept in. She couldn't have come back last night. When was the last time you saw her, Mary? Uh, when when she went out last evening. We'd better start looking for her. Well, I'm going straight down to the police station. The police station? We can't let that girl roam round loose on the island. We've got to find her b- before she does some harm to herself. Uh, my court, Mary, if you would. Yes, yes, Minister. I'll come with you, Minister. And what about you, Professor? No, no, I, I think two's company. I'll just wander up to Hugh's house and poke around in the ash. You won't find much in there. What? Oh, <laughs> yeah, you're right, officer. Uh, Sergeant, if you don't mind, sir. Sergeant McBenny. Okay, Sergeant. Yeah. Did the minister send you? Yes, sir. What, to uh, keep an eye on me? To help you, sir, if you want. Uh, nice of you. Oh, it's only two minutes on the bike. Um... What are we looking for, by the way? I really don't know. Some of Dr. Dexter's research papers, perhaps. Though I don't think much could have survived this. It's one of the most comprehensive fires I've ever seen. Just as well, if you ask me. Some of the church fellowship took great exception to Dr. Dexter's researches. Now, why would they do that? Well, sir, over the past few years, those researches, as you call them, seem to be aimed exclusively at the fellowship. Oh, come on. And to no one else. Practically every single member of the fellowship had been investigated by Dr. Dexter at some time or another. Investigated, Sergeant? Oh, that's police language. You mean examined. No, sir. I mean investigated, Professor. Brain pictures, blood samples and the like. He even went into our family backgrounds, our ancestry. Oh, aye. It was an investigation, right enough. Did he ever investigate you, Sergeant? Yes, yeah, sir. He said it was for the influenza. That was just last year. So you're a member of the Fellowship, too? Yeah. Well, I don't think you're going to find anything here, Professor. No, I guess you're right. I'll, uh, I'll walk you back to the manse, see if there's any news. What of young Flora? So you know about that? Yes. Yes, I was there when they found out. Uh, well, uh, hold on, sir. I'll, uh, I'll just fetch my bike. Okay. I, um, I wonder what makes a girl like that run off. Uh, you mean uh, uh, Flora? Yeah. Well, I hear you're wanting to operate on her head, and she might not want to see it opened up like a can of beans. It is her head, after all. But no one's told her about that yet. Maybe she doesn't need to be told. Oh, dear God. Are you ready now, sir? Yeah, okay, I'm coming. This is the beach road around the head. It's a wee bit further than the path over the top. But it's easier for me with the bike and all. Is that a uh, drop in the head? Aye, sir. Straight up above you. Long way to fall. Poor Hugh. It was an open and shut case, Professor. Not open enough, Sergeant, and shut too damn quick. There's someone up there. Uh, you couldn't see them from here, even if there was. Nobody goes too near the edge. It's in danger of giving way, as it is. There's someone up there now. <laughs> no, there are always wee pebbles falling. It's the wind and the rain that does it. <laughs> Look out! Come on, sir. The whole cliff's coming down. Run, Professor. Run for your life! Good Lord. What was that? Oh, it's nothing. It's just a cliff. There's been a lot of rain recently. Must have weakened the overhang. Ah, it's fortunate that there was no one underneath. But there was. Look. Hi. 
Aye, there's two of them. That looks like Sergeant McBinney. Come on. We'd best see if they're all right. <laughs> Curtis, are you hurt? Oh, yeah. I never felt better. But what happened? That, that damn cliff <laughs> tried to fall down. Aye, and it near succeeded too. One man or another, Drockner Head's a pretty dangerous place. <laughs> Especially to foreigners. <sighs> what are you all doing here, anyway? There's been news of Flora. Oh? Uh -huh. Well, apparently she's been seen near an old barn. Uh -huh. Which barn is this? Old Mackenzie's place. One of your men brought the news not five minutes since. We're just on our way over there. I wonder what put it into her head to come out here. Why did Flora stay with you in the first place, Minister? Our parents sent her. Because she was troubled in spirit. And the trouble stayed with her. More's the pity. What about her parents, Minister? Uh, were they members of the fellowship? Her mother was, but her father was an ungodly man. They were happy for Flora to stay with you? Her father wasn't. Old Keary kicked up a fuss about it. Isn't that right, Minister? Aye, aye, right enough. Why is everyone talking about them in the past tense? As though they were dead. They are dead. They died about two, four years ago. A terrible accident. Not a fire, by any chance. Hey, it was a fire. Oh, Professor, you must be fake. And this island must be very inflammable. Oh, uh, that's the barn up ahead now. Uh, are you sure this is the right place, Minister? It seems odd for a lassie to come here. It was one of your own men who told us, Sergeant. Oh, it seems ridiculous coming all the way up here. It's a wild goose chase, if you ask me. You think perhaps we ought to turn back, Sergeant? There's no point in going into a place oh, like that. Oh, stop your blathering, man. Stay out. She's not there, I tell you. That's easily proved, Sergeant. Stay out of that barn. Why? Don't argue with him, John. I'm ordering you to stay out. And I am telling you, I'm going in there. Keep out, I tell you. Keep him out. He mustn't. Come in. Take your hands off my purse. Keep like look out, Minister. Oh, come on, John. You. Leave the man. Keep it. him out. He's past you, he man. He must not come in. He's past you. He must not come in. <sighs> what was all that about? <laughs> Police sergeant's a mutant, didn't you see his eyes? <coughs> then why is he fighting the minister of all people? You're right, it doesn't make sense. Unless the minister isn't a mutant, which knocks our theory on the head. I can't work that one out, at least not now. Come on. <sighs> Flora must be in here. Keep him out. Keep him out. Over here, in the corner. Keep him out. Keep him out. It's all right, Flora. It's all over now. There's nothing to be frightened of. Here, blow your nose on that. <laughs> Flora, can you make the policeman go home? What about the minister? Oh, the minister? Oh, keep him away. The minister's not here, Flora. Honestly. At least he's taking no further interest in the proceedings. I... I think the sergeant hit him with his nightstick. Huh? Truncheon. No, right, truncheon. The minister's asleep, Flora. He'll never find out about your being here unless Sergeant McBinney tells him. So I want Sergeant McBinney to go away. Don't you? Oh, yes. I want... <sighs> I want Sergeant McBinney? I want... Sergeant McBinney. To go. To go away, away from, from here. here. Wish hard, Flora. Wish Sergeant McBinney away from here. I wish Sergeant McBinney away from here. He's going. He just turned and he's walking away, like a sleepwalker. Bye-bye, Sergeant McBinney. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate breaking things up, John, but 
I think it's time we were moving out. That boat leaves in an hour. Right. Now, Flora, I thought it might be rather fun to go on a boat. Oh. Have you ever been on one? No. The minister always forbade me. Well, we won't let the minister know. We'll just sneak on board without telling him. Eh? <laughs> Come on, then. Take my hand. Uncle Cornelius is in charge now. Uncle Cornelius? You can forget all about that horrid old minister. Uncle. Uncle Cornelius. Hey, wait for me, Uncle Cornelius. Welcome aboard, sir. May I have your tickets, please? Yes, there are three of us. Thank you very much, sir. Where are the cabins? Well, they're both aft, sir. One on the port side, the other on the starboard. Ours is uh, cabin A. Aft on the port side, sir. Come on, John, Flora. After you, Flora, my dear. Thank you. The cabin is aft on the port side, wherever that is. Straight ahead on this side. Hmm. Mm, cabin A, here we are. Hey, your cabin awaits you, Uncle Cornelius. Do I have to go in there? Not if you don't want to, my dear. I want to stay outside and look at all the people. All right, you do that. Curtis, we must keep an eye on her. The least little thing could set her off again. You, Mary? You stay with her, John. You're doing just fine. Oh. I'll see if I can get some drinks brought up to the cabin, huh? Flora, would you like something to drink? Oh, what can I have? Anything you like. Uh, could I have some wine? Wine? Well, why not? She's overage. Wine it shall be, my lady. Won't take me a minute. Oh, look, look, there's Mary down there. Where? Down there by the gangway. Oh, yes. I wish Mary could come. She'd love a boat ride. Oh, I, sh I shouldn't think she'd want to come. She'd want to if I wanted her to. Uh, oh, yes, well, I'm sure she would. Well, then I do want her to come. Flora, no. Come on, little Mary. Come for a boat trip. No, Flora. She doesn't want to come. She hasn't got time. I want her to come. She will come. She has to. Welcome aboard, madam. I must go on board. Uh, may I have your ticket? I must go on board. John, I've uh, had the drinks put in the cabin. The wine glass is hers. Yes, Curtis, thank goodness you're back. Well, what the hell's going on? She's trying to call Mary on board. Now, Flora, they won't let her on without a ticket be reasonable. Why don't you come and have a glass of wine with us, Flora, to celebrate? No, I want Mary to come. Well, she can't. Then I'm not coming. I don't want a boat trip. We can't get off now, Flora. It's too late. Get her into the cabin. In here, Flora. Dear. No. Now come along. No, I won't. You can't Flora, make get me. Get her in there. Uh, get in there. No. Oh, uh, uh, Purser, uh, how long before we sail? Any moment now, sir. But what was all that? Oh, it's nothing, Purser. Just a rather spoiled child who doesn't want to go back home to London. <laughs> I don't blame her. You wouldn't get me going into a big city for all the tea in China. <laughs> No good shouting, Flora. You'll just stay there now until we sail. Help, help, take me off. Help, help. Your tickets, take please, sir. Me off. Take me off. Your tickets, please. Help me off. Oh, look here. Take me off. Take me off. Right, off you go then. Down there where you just came from. Take me off. Hey, none of that. Come here. I warned you. John. John, let me in. Let me in. Oh, for goodness sakes, John, do something. She must be calling every mutant on the island. There'll be a riot if we don't get her under control. The only way to do that is to knock her out. Yeah, exactly. Any suggestions? Mm-hmm. Just to these two. Pop them in her wine glass and make her drink it. That should do the trick. I hope you know what you're doing. Trust me, John. Anyway, I can't stay here chatting with you. I've got an invasion to repel. Now, don't forget to lock the door after me. All right, all right. 
Pick me off. Pick me off. It's locked, Purser. Pick me off. Oh, my God. Now you two. Stop kicking that door down. John, for Pete's sake, switch her off, will you? Oh, no, you don't. Oh, no. Come no, oh, you off. don't. Come in. Off. No. What, what are you doing? Oh. Oh. I beg your pardon. I'm awfully oh, sorry, that's, sir. That's quite all right, Percy. What, what happened? Well, I thought you were going to fall, so I, I just grabbed you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. You feeling all right now? Yes. Yes, thank you, sir. What came over me? Anyway, if you'll excuse me, sir, we'll be sailing almost immediately. I must attend to my duty. John! Open up, John. It's me, Curtis. Come in. What have you been doing? Oh, I've been swapping bedtime stories with the purser. Where's that drink, John? I, I think I've earned it. There you are, dear boy. Oh. Scott, as usual. Oh, boy. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. We started without you. Didn't we, Flora? <laughs> yes, we did, Uncle Cornelius. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, so you like the wine, Flora. Hmm? Oh, <laughs> yes. He never let me drink wine. Who didn't? The minister? Aye. Well, he'll have to let you now, won't he? <laughs> Aye. Oh, as oh, long as you don't tell him. Oh. Catch up, Curtis. Oh. Ready and oh. waiting, sir. <laughs> oh, what was it? Your famous Mickey Finn again? Yes, sir. Double measure. It's very good, isn't it? It is the best. What was all that commotion outside the cabin? Oh, my dear John, I was repelling borders, or trying to. Quite apart from the little army of mutants down on the dock, our friendly neighborhood purser decided to join in the fun and kick the door down. Great Scott, the purser. How did you stop him? Well, I interposed my body between him and the cabin door. Clever, eh? And he kicked me on the ankle, damn <laughs> him. <laughs> Mind you, he wasn't really himself at the time, but when he came to his senses, he apologized and went about his duties like a good little purser. Extraordinary. The purser's... An unexpected complication, oh, isn't he? Oh, yes, he was a real shaker. I just wasn't prepared for a mutant here on the boat. But it's a normal enough job for an islander plying back and forth to the mainland. Yeah, but I wonder how many mutants have used the boat to get off the island altogether and whether they went of their own free will or under orders. <laughs> That was part two of Aliens in the Mind, co-starring Vincent Price as Curtis Lark and Peter Cushing as John Cornelius, with Henry Stamper as Donald Skula, Sandra Clark, Flora Keary, Fraser Carr, police sergeant, Irene Sutcliffe, Mary, and Andrew Sear, the purser. Aliens in the Mind was written by René Basilico from an idea by Robert Holmes. Production by John Dias.